Hey y'all. Hey Lil Life and Jay. What's going on? Happy Thursday. We made it Thursday. Y'all. So Somebody had left a comment and said that they had wanted me to do the reaction to the, um, they wanted to not reaction, they wanted to hear my opinion, but that's a reaction. They, uh, wanted to hear my opinion about the Wendy Williams thing. I hadn't seen anything about it, known anything about it, didn't know something was going on, didn't know none of that. Y'all, that case... It's sad. That case is sad. Y'all ring that over if I can hit the thumbs up the like button as you is coming in. Hey, Shanita. As you is coming in, y'all ring the doorbell, hit the thumbs up the like button. We're going to start out with how y'all day doing. I'm doing good. Thank you for asking. How y'all day going? While we allow more people to get up in here so we can discuss this here topic. How you doing, girly? Thank you for all uh, telling them to hit the like button. Y'all ring that doorbell for me. Hit the thumbs up, the like button. Hit the like button. If you got a moment, hit the like button. If you're looking at me on the TV, hit the like button. The only thing you got to do is hit your arrow up, and you'll see my look, my picture. You'll see a thumbs up, thumbs down, uh, comments, and all that stuff right there. Hit that thumbs up for me. Hey, Jean. Some fold of laundry while I talk, y'all. Hey, everybody. Hey, hey, hey. Tomorrow's almost Friday. We all, tomorrow's gonna be Friday. It's almost Friday. That's how I meant to say it. Me and Mama just bought you quick chicken and rice vegetables. Mama said, I like that, girl. It was good. It was good. <sighs> On point. But I got me, I got a taste for me some um seafood. No, me and my husband, I started to watch that yesterday. I had actually went on Netflix yesterday and saw that. Girl, won't it, girl? But I went on, um, sorry to hear that, Miss Janice. I hope that God gave you the strength to endure everything that you is feeling. Hey, Tika. Um, uh, but, uh, Kay, um, I saw that on Netflix yesterday and I ran across it, didn't know what it was. And I didn't even click on it to watch it. Good thing I didn't because when my husband got home, he was showing me on TV. He was like, we're going to watch this right here. And I was like, I almost watched that. <laughs> he was like, no, don't watch that. So we posted, I guess we're going to probably watch it this weekend or something. But yeah. um, Y'all keep ringing the doorbell for me. We got 40 seconds. Let me go ahead and set my first goal. My first goal, we y'all already know, my uh, that I like to um get up to at least 100 likes. So we're going to go ahead on and set that first goal to 60 likes. If you one of the ones that came in and did not hit the like button, y'all hit the like button for me if you don't mind. I sure appreciate it if you do. It is. Hey, T. Johnson. Okay, you're making me excited to see it. But anywho, so let's, uh, come on, y'all, hit the like button. It costs you nothing to hit the like button. It's free to hit the like button. Did you subscribe? Did you subscribe? Have you been here for a while? If you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe. It's free. It don't cost you nothing. You ain't got to pay for it. Okay? 
it don't you don't uh, it you you don't have to pay to subscribe. I know it's called subscribe, but you ain't got to pay for it. It's not a, like a subscription that you have to pay for. It's free. Go on, on subscribe. I remember there was a time that I thought back in my you know when I first started watching YouTube and stuff like that. I thought that subscribing means that you got to pay for something. You ain't got to pay for it. It's free. You ain't gonna never be charged for it. Okay, so go ahead on hit that subscribe. Go ahead on hit that like button. You ain't gonna be charged to hit the like button. You ain't gonna be charged. It only helps circulate me on around so other people can find out about me. So if you was here for me, y'all hit that like button. Help circulate me on around. That's the least you can do. That's the least you can do is hit the like button to help circulate me if you want to see me grow. So hit that like button. Hey, LSP. If you want to see me grow, hit that like button. If you want to be a blessing, hit that like button. Hit the like button. That's being a blessing. Being a blessing where you can't afford to send a dollar. Okay? And also, while I'm clocked in, while I'm at it, okay? While I'm clocked in, if you want to be a blessing, then hit me up on my cash out. Dollar sign, R-O-C, the letter N, T, T. Whatever you want to send, send a dollar, two, honey, maybe a, 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 a little bit more, honey, a few, honey. Uh, Susie, post my cash out for me so I can pin it real quick. Dollar sign, R-O-C, the letter N-T-T. -T. Clocked in, y'all. So if y'all want to be a blessing, hey, go ahead on and do so. If somebody say, no, she did, she begging, then call it what you want. It is what it is. I'm clocked in. But anyhow, Halo Life. Y'all ring the doorbell for me. Hit the thumbs up, the like button. Come on, we get we we gotta get to a hundred, y'all. But my first goal is what was what was it sixty? Let's get to sixty. I'm paying this cash up soon as um Susie posted for me. What's on the menu? Um, it's probably gonna be something quick, maybe some burgers or something tonight. I ain't doing nothing big because tomorrow is Friday. Friday, baby. And I'm gonna party and get my drink on. Okay. God dang it, I had to mess them up. Hold on now. Don't do that to me. I'm trying to pin this here. Can I not? I, I know I can pin. Susie, don't put the whole um link. Just put uh, cause this thing is is tripping. Oh, there you go. Wait. Yeah, just put the name on there. R O C the letter N T T. Dollar sign. Cause it's not letting me pin this real quick. It's not letting me pin that. I don't know why. But anywho, so we're about to get started. Thank you. Can I pin it? Why does it? Can we not pin? Hmm. 
I don't know. I can't pin it. For some reason I can't pin it. Yeah, it's not even letting me pin, but it's okay. Just keep posting the funny. For anybody that want to be a blessing, y'all can send me something to my cash out, dollar sign R O C the letter E N T T. A dollar, two dollars, whatever. It's up to you. Whatever you want to do, boo. But anywho, so we're gonna talk about um this here Wendy Williams thing. Hey, Miss Meredith. So we're gonna talk about this um Wendy Williams thing here. I had a whole I had I had like just a variety of emotions watching that because at first when I started watching it, I was about to cry. Then when I started watching it, I got I I I just felt sorry for. Then I, I still feel sorry for. Then as I was watching, you know, more and more I was watching it, I started getting upset. Then I started noticing the people that was around her that was just yeah. So y'all know in the beginning it started off with um the person Stephanie, right? That seemed like she was going to try to take over um take over um um uh, being a producer or something like that. She said that she wasn't, but that's what it seemed like. And you know, she got that guy that's her producer. I forgot his name. So I'm looking at, did y'all notice what I noticed about Stephanie, but we're going to say allegedly, but um, did y'all notice what I noticed about that Stephanie? That Stephanie didn't even seem right from the get go. First of all, you don't, you don't, you don't pay, you don't, Pay for her to take take a flight to go to LA. Then you taking her out to eat. You allow her to order a great group, great goose look a drink. Um, for one, she's sitting there all she looking bugged out the whole time. Um She's steady talking about a show. Uh, Re-signing to a, 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 a different, what, show or something like that. Um, and then Stephanie turned around and asked her, do you know, do you want to go to the Oscars? And Wendy say, What's the Oscars? So you mean to tell me that out of all the, first of all, the way she was looking, you mean to tell me that ain't nothing just clicking your mind and make you think like something was wrong with her? Man, I don't care what that woman say. You could see the expression and everything all over her. That woman, she had a motive, allegedly. She had a motive. And she won right. And I feel like that that woman was out to get what she can get or do something that do what she, whatever it is that she had planned to maybe some kind of way sabotage uh, Wendy while she had her in her care at that time and stuff like that. Because first of all, if you see the way that this woman is looking, why would you ask her to go to the Oscars? And Wendy said, I'm going like this. I'm going, and you know what? Another thing, like, okay, so basically what we dealing with with this case is, yes, she has, hey, Bella. Yes, she's had, yes, she um is um uh, dealing with uh, dementia. But the media has taken this situation and they running with it. And they want to just get paid off of it. We're just going to say allegedly. Okay. They want to get paid. They want to get paid off of it. Because first off, for one, this is this is something normal that happens to a lot of a lot of people. Only difference is that this is a rich, famous woman. And they taking her situation and want to get paid off of it. 
talking about or putting the out there. And then on top of that, want to say that they didn't even know that she was like this. And if they would have known, they would have never um, did the documentary or the, or the show. I don't understand how they didn't know something was wrong with this woman. I'm quite sure that they knew the Wendy well in her right mind. And looking at this Wendy that's not in her right mind, honey, I don't even know this lady. And looking at her, I know someone right. You know what I'm saying? Eyes buck like they about to pop out her head. Like, come on now. These people just trying to get paid off this lady. And then on top of that, so let's go back to this 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 woman, Sean. You know, Shauna. Sean, whatever her name was, Sean. We're gonna go back to the to, to the lady Sean. So when Wendy say, um, she don't know what the Oscars is, and she's talking about I'm going just like this. She had on her little shorts and her little her Gucci shirt and her little glasses and stuff like that. And she's talking about I'm going just like this. And 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 and, and she say, You can't go like that. You gotta um wear you a nice dress. You know, right then and there, that woman knew that someone right. But then she sits there and try to tell, she sits there and try to tell um the media that Wendy looked fine to her. You knew that she, if you did, if that at some point that you did feel like that she was right. At some point, if you were still, if you, if you did feel like that she was uh one, you know, she was all together, one nothing wrong with her. Um, when you told her what she had to wear to the, the Oscars, she knew that someone right with Wendy. You could see the expression all in that woman's face that she knows something wasn't right with, with Wendy. She, they, they use Wendy, they know her mind. Exactly. And then when she was sitting there and Wendy had ordered that, that, uh, um, so rock for a drink. Did you see how that how the woman looked when uh she ordered that drink? She knew Wendy was supposed to wasn't supposed to have that drink, but she tried to play it out, talking about like, oh, she don't know, and this and that, and Wendy, she's fine. And you know, even when Wendy was ordering her food, let me get another one of these here. You know what I'm saying? Oh, when I go on the show, I'm 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 going just like this. The new show, my name is going to be Wendy Hunter. And um when I and I'm gonna be dressed just like this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my shoes off because she wants them to see her feet. And then she um and, and I'm gonna take my wig off and I'm gonna sell it to somebody. And so out of all that, wasn't that sounding funny? Wasn't that, nothing was sounding funny. These, and then, why, and my thing is this. First thing that came to my mind was, it was like, this lady must want to try to expose Wendy or something. Because why would you take her to the Oscars and she looking like that? The people that don't know Wendy and know that, that she had like a alcohol problem at one point in time, I don't even know if around the time they was, I don't think that around the time that she was doing this, uh, she had alcohol problem, but I know that prior to this, she had alcohol problem. So the people that she takes, um, that, that Sean is going to take uh, Wendy around at these Oscars, these folks going to be looking at her like, what is you high off of? What's wrong with you? What you don't have to drink and the way she's talking and everything is it's just like you know she won't right. The way she looking, you know she won't right. So why would you take this woman to an Oscar looking like this? That's that's not right. That woman had a whole motive. She had a whole motive behind. Y'all keep posting my cash out for me. Y'all ring that doorbell. Hit the thumbs up the like button if you don't mind. But that woman had a whole motive. Hey, lovely. She had a whole motive to me. She wasn't right. So then, thank you, Susie. So then, um, they, okay, so then her, her, uh, her niece come. People that loved her, 
And 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 hold on, let me let me go back to this producer guy. So the producer guy, he seen he did seem as though he cared, right? You know, and I'm not gonna say that he don't care, but uh yes, hey Miss Annette, he did seem like he cared. And I don't really want to say that he didn't care, but in the end, when it when they mentioned that everybody that's working with her is still getting paid a regular salary, it made me think, you know, and it made me wonder like, okay, he probably scared for anybody else to step in to take his place because that's going to be his uh, funds gone. You know what I'm saying? So he really is trying to act like he cares so much so that he can stay in his position long as he can. He don't want nobody else to come and be getting her and taking her away and stuff like that because that's taking her away from him. Now, I don't know what kind of legal uh, situation that is in place right now where can't nobody come in and do this or do that right, you know, uh, with uh, her finances and stuff. But I do know that um, they were saying that the state had took away um, the um, rights of her um, power of attorney, which was her son which was her son. And so I guess I'm guessing that the rights was turned over to somebody that didn't even know her, whoever that person was. I don't even know. If y'all know, drop the comment, drop it down in the comments who this person was supposed to be where they turned over the rights uh, to somebody else over her finances and stuff, you know? So but Wendy's at this house, right? And my thing is this. Wendy had called the girl Sean because the girl Sean said Wendy called her was because she was she was on the phone talking about oh I ain't got no food and ain't no food in my refrigerator and she was in that apartment or something like that by herself or something anyway however I don't know but if the guy that that is her producer cares so much why? Did he allow no food to be in her house? Why did he not make sure that she was being fed? They weren't showing that part where he was doing that. They weren't showing that part. And so, um, yeah, that's what it said. They weren't showing that part where he was making sure that she was being fed. But then... He, it's like he, it's like he act like he cared, but he didn't care. You know, he didn't, he really didn't care as much as he tried to make himself seem like. I think he only cared about, did they sell her apartment? Yeah, they sold, that's, that's what they were showing where they had, um, was in the process of selling the apartment. And when it was selling the apartment, she, he was there when they was doing it. And the apartment that they sold, I guess they were selling the apartment to move her into something that didn't have stairs, I guess, because they feared for her to be in something that um, that had stairs, probably because she was falling or whatever, you know. But her family that was coming around and her son that was trying to do for her and her other son that sat off to the side and her niece that came around and Black China that came around and these people saw that something was wrong with her. I'm trying to think who it was that uh took her out to the um the sidewalk where they got the star on the ground and with her name in it. And I'm trying, I want to say it was that guy, the producer. I want to say that it was him. He took her out there to um to that star. And while she was out there at that star, it was fans that was coming up, and you could tell that those fans was like. It, they could tell someone right with her neither. Why would you allow her to be in this type of and be around people knowing the condition that she was in? I don't get that. 
You know what I'm saying? She don't know that she's not in her right mind. But you say that you're the producer that cares so much for her. Why didn't you protect her from the outside? You know what I'm saying? Why didn't that, that was, yeah, that was wrong. That was so wrong because those people is coming up to her. And then I remember there was this one person, one of the fans that was like, I want my picture by myself. But you don't know what those people did with those pictures and the things they were saying. And I'm glad that when she was taking those pictures that she was looking regular because her, 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 her what I mean by that is her eyes wasn't bulked while she was taking those pictures. Because I'm telling you, when she was talking to them, her eyes were like this. So I'm glad that she wasn't doing all that when she took them pictures because I mean, why, 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 why would you allow that? So then, um, she goes, hold on y'all. Thank you. So basically, we're dealing with a case that is it's, it's normal. It's normal, but it's a celebrity. And these people is just trying to take advantage of her, her money. And all of that. Everybody around her want a piece of the pie. And it's sad. It's 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 really sad. And I and you know what another thing I really feel? I could be wrong. No, they didn't. She didn't. Be, and I'm gonna tell let me tell you something, but let me tell you something though. I could be wrong, but I really feel feel and I and, and I'm gonna say this too I didn't watch her show but I know I've heard you know some little things here and there but I really feel that these people is doing what they doing you thought it was drugs I, I definitely I definitely didn't think it was drugs at all I did not think it was drugs um I really feel that these people is doing what she's doing because a lot of them, like the, the media, the media that made allegedly, I feel the media, the media allegedly made is, is doing what they're doing and trying to say that they didn't know um, that she was dealing with anything. And if they would have known that, they want to never, she also talked a lot of trash. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, click, clank. So, um, because I was finna get, I was finna go there, but listen. So, I really feel that they, they, they trying to pretend like they don't, allegedly, they pretending like they don't know that something is wrong with her or something was wrong with her while they was doing this show and stuff like that. And if they would have known, they wouldn't have did the show. And I feel like they do know, they did know, but they doing it all because of the way William Williams was doing on her show. The way she talked about people and stuff like that and put people information out there and all of that. And I feel like that that's they get back to her. That's what I really feel. I really feel like all of this is really just get back because 
what makes her situation any different from a normal person that ends up with dementia? And yes, she's a, a big icon. She's a celebrity with lots of money. You know what I'm saying? But what makes her any different than a lot in the, the other person? It's all for the money. And that's what it is. And, and I feel like a lot of it is to just get back at her for the things that she has done on those shows, on the show, on the show. And it's sad, though. It's really sad because you plan with a illness. They plan on the illness. And then also they plan with this woman family. You know what I'm saying? But my thing is this. With Wendy being as big as she is, I can't seem to understand. And also dealing with that breakup that she had from, I believe, was her husband, right? Okay. I can't seem to understand why she ain't have a will. A will would have um, helped her out in this situation, right? It seems as though she should have had her a will. Being in the position that she in with all the stuff that she had, the show, the money, the the, the apartment and her her cars and all that and then on top of that kids too being a power of attorney was not enough that wasn't that wasn't enough because at the end of the day how let me tell y'all something if y'all be put in a situation where you have to be over somebody being a power attorney is not enough. You have to be a legal guardian. Power attorney, uh, uh, rights goes away when that person passed away. It's best for you to be that person legal guardian than it is to be a power attorney. So, I I don't know why the the. I wonder how hurt. That's what I kept thinking myself too. I'm like, now nah, I wonder how he feels. You know, I wonder how he feels. But it also made me think too. I don't know if her alcohol is what led him to leave or what. I don't know what it was, but. How this had hit so fast on her, I believe that her situation was already happening when they was together. It was already happening. And he and and see that right there could have been part of the reasoning to him leaving too. You know what I'm saying? You got to you got to look at both sides of the story. I know the man left the woman, but at the same time, he probably was dealing with some of this that was coming on her. At that time, it ain't just get bad all overnight. It didn't just get bad within um, a year or two. It didn't just get bad, you know, like, you know, to the point where it is now, just oh, in a year's time. I don't know how many years, how long have it, have it been, but I know it ain't been that long. But he, I, I feel that man probably could have been dealing with some of that stuff that uh, it was coming about. It's coming about with her, you know, with the dementia and stuff like that. And I remember um, on the documentary, they show a little part on the, um, when she was on the stage on the show where she was trying to call somebody's name and she didn't even, he was using them. And they was trying, he was trying to, um, they was trying to, um, she was trying to call somebody's name and she couldn't even remember the man's name that she was trying to call, which they probably made it look like, you know, look like that she just couldn't remember you know how we be sometimes we try to call somebody's name and can't remember their name but they made it look like it was like a, a memory loss type thing but it's sad though it's really sad it's sad that um it's sad that she um 
uh, can't be in the care of her family. Um, not saying that the family, you know, really have her full um, well-being at their interest or whatever. But what I'm saying is, um, it's sad that she can't be in the care of her family. At least be if if at least if you're going to be used by anybody, you know what I'm saying. It's not good to be used by nobody. But at least be, if you're going to be used by anybody, God dang, let it be a children. Let it be, let it be, let it be them. You know what I'm saying? Because if anybody deserve her money and all that she has worked hard for, it, it's, it's her children. You know what I'm saying? Let it be, let it be them instead of people that's tr trying to take care of their families that don't have no kind of connection, no kind of relationship, no, no ties to her, but work. You know what I'm saying? At least allow her sister, just like her sister said. Oh, okay. I didn't know nothing about um she was doing drugs behind his back and stuff. I ain't gonna I ain't gonna say uh, that's not right. I'm not gonna say that. But um you know it's not right. It's not right. And like I say, at least her children should be the one that He got her together. What you mean, lovely? Yeah, I didn't know nothing about no. I I don't know because I didn't watch her show. Only thing I heard of was alcohol. <laughs> That's all I ever heard of. So I don't know nothing about no drugs and stuff. And I really don't know nothing about the marriage that whatever happened with them. Only thing I ever heard about the marriage was that he he ended up with another woman cheating and stuff like that. And I think he ended up with right down the street from her. Like that was really torture, but. No, I I don't care how much bad a lot of people are saying that this is karma for her comments about Mepi Man's wife and other women who tore she tore down. Um I'm not gonna say it's because of a particular person. A lot of people they like to try to pinpoint and just talk about somebody's situation because of what somebody but because of what a person said about somebody else like i'm not gonna say that just because she talked about method man and just because she talked about his well method man wife and whoever else that she talked about yes what she could be dealing with is some of karma you know I ain't even going to not, leave, I'm not even going to leave that. I'm not even going to leave that part out because we all do have to deal with our own karma. We do. That's just life. You know what I'm saying? But her situation is her situation. She was already going to be dealing with this dementia. She didn't know that she was going to have dementia. We didn't know that she was going to have dementia. Her children didn't know that she was going to have dementia. Nobody knew that she was going to have dementia. They, they even saying that the dementia came from her drinking the alcohol. It, it, it uh, spiraled down from there. They didn't know that it came from that. I mean, they, they say it came from that, but we don't know. We don't know because at the end of the day, our life has already been written by God. So... No matter what path that she's on right now and the things that she has done, yes, she's going to have to pay for the things that she has done, but is it right for us to say, oh, um, I feel like that she should, um, her husband should take her money or I feel like that she should be going through what she's going through because, um, you know, she was wrong for what she did to this person. We ain't the one that's supposed to sit down and judge her for what her wrongdoings. She has to pay for that on her own. Just like us, we got to pay for our own wrongdoings whenever that time comes. So that's why we know, that's why we must know we got to be careful for what we do to people and the way we act towards people and stuff like that. Because at the end of the day, you're going to have to end up paying for that. You got to pay for everything that you have done in life. So, yes, she could be reaping her, her she could be getting her whoopings. She, exactly, judge not. She could be getting her whoopings. 
But at the same time, she's dealing with what her life was already probably destined to be. She was already destined to be a person with dementia. There was no way around that. But it's not right for people to sit back and just judge and talk about her because of what she's doing, what she, the way she is. It's not right for the people to the, the the state to take all her money away and and she you know and not leave it to at least her children to be able to care for her. It's not right. Just like on the um show, it said that um on the show it said um. Uh, her son, when her when she was with her son, um, a certain amount of money was being spent, and he said that she always wanted me to spend her money, and as long as I ran that by her, I was allowed to spend her money. But then. I'm just saying, in a in, in a in a in a in a way, it almost seemed a little wrong too. Because if you know that your mom wasn't all the way there in her right mind, it kind of seemed like it wasn't right. So I feel like that when your mom was in her right mind, there should have been some kind of legal process going on to help cover him and her. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of them could have been just thinking about her money and not thinking about her well-being. What? Mm -mm -mm. But yeah, and we're just thinking about her money. You know, so probably did. So yeah, I just think she's just dealing with what was already to come in her life. That's what I really think. And I really do feel like she is dealing with karma. I really do feel like that she is dealing with a greedy family. I really do feel like she is dealing with a greedy, selfish group of workers around her that's out to get whatever they can get while they're getting this good until it's gone. I really do feel like that. Um, all the way down to the producer. Uh, uh, everybody that's around her. That's why they're trying to keep her in New York. I really feel like that the state was wrong. I really do feel like that. I really feel like the state was wrong. Um, they should have. I, I don't see what makes a case any different from someone that doesn't have money. I really don't. Because she has a problem that people that don't have money have. Trust me, they ain't spent all no money ordering no food, baby. You best believe that they they it, it, they just said that. They just said that. They ain't spent all no money just ordering no food now. So, um, yeah, ain't no way, ain't no way, ain't no way you could just spend all of somebody money just ordering food. It ain't that much eating in the world. It ain't. So, <laughs> no. And then the stuff that she was getting rid of and talking about selling and all that, who's to say that they wasn't a part of that? They wasn't a part of that to get to get that money. 
if if they if they if she didn't sell it while she was still around them, and whenever the family was to probably step in one day, step in or allowed some kind of say so, whatever, or whenever anything was to happen to her, the family come in. Y'all know how y'all know what happens. Y'all know what happens to to greedy families. She got two sons. She got one named Kevin and 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 what is it? Kevin and T. The other one started with T. I don't see. I don't know nothing about. I can't talk about the Britney Spears because I ain't watched that. But I just, I really, I literally just watched that um documentary of her. But it's it's sad, y'all. No, she got she got two. She got two. She got one named Tevin, and then the up uh, one named Te one named Tevin and the up uh, and no one named Kevin and the other one started with T. I thought they were saying Tevin, but it's what is his name? It started with a T. She got two sons, one light skin, one dark skin. But the one, the light skin one, Tevin, he was doing the most talking. The other one, he he wasn't saying nothing. You only see one child. Oh, it was it no on that show they were showing two. Tevin, they kept mentioning the two. Tevin and something else. I, I mean not Tevin. Kevin and something else. Yeah. But look it up, look it up on Google and see as as Google how many kids she got. Oh, that was her nephew. Oh, okay. All right. Well, yeah. So yeah, the light skin with Tevin. And then her niece that was coming around. It was, it was, she was a, what was she, news, something with the news or something? So, yeah, that, her niece that was coming around, it was heartbreaking for her. For her dad, her dad even, her dad, it was, that was heartbreaking because her dad, he was just sitting there like, this, this really my daughter and she just really is crumbling. You know, she really is crumbling because she was sitting there. She was saying, yeah, the, we, I'm going to go back on the show on Wednesday. He was like, today is Wednesday. So. Okay, so she do that news. Okay. Well, thank you, but we can't, we can't, we can't, um, we can't, um, you can't put down, she's human just like the rest of us. And we all make mistakes. We all do stuff that we ain't supposed to do. We all act certain kind of ways. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's on her. That's on her. You can't you 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 can't just be like that and just say I I you know basically you don't like the lady. You know what I'm saying? You can't you can't be like that. You people like that you just got to pray for them. You got to, you just got to, you just got to ignore the way that they acted and just pray for them. You can't just, you can't just, you just as bad as her acting like that. You know what I'm saying? Basically, you just as bad as her acting like that because at the end of the day, this is a person that you don't even have no kind of dealings with. You don't even have no dealings with this lady. You don't even know this lady for real, for real. This lady ain't even a part of your family in no kind of way affecting you and your everyday life. So why be upset at someone else and their actions? You know what I'm saying? It has nothing to do with you. 
what she's what she's dealing with and what she's going to have to go through it has nothing to do with you nothing so why feel like you have to hate her you ain't got to hate that lady because at the end of the day she had a choice like all of us she had a choice she had a choice whether she wanted to be a good woman or whether she want to um be around her talking about people and doing wrong and doing whatever she wanted to do like she's leading her own life you know and you can already tell what time of day it was by the way that she talked because if you listen to her i'm like, this is what i wanted to say to y'all if y'all didn't really catch this i want you to go back and watch this this what this what really was speaking to my spirit about her that money is what drove her money 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 is what really drove her because if you listen to her to me even with her not being her right mind and the things that she's saying i know it may not sound right to some of y'all but you got to see way beyond what is going on you got to see her you just got to see her situation. To me, it sounds like she just want to be at peace. She want to be, and 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 that's not what she's saying. And I don't even know if she even know how to say that right now. I, I don't even know if she really even know how to say that. But to me, it sounds like she wants to be at peace. She wants to be comfortable. And you could tell that the money is what, drives her that drove her because the reason why i say that is because she kept mentioning i'm gonna take my wig off and i'm gonna and i'm gonna tell all the people to take their wigs off and then i'm gonna tell them put it back on but i'm gonna take my wig off and i and she kept talking about taking her shoes off and showing her feet and she kept talking about and i'm gonna wear this right here and when they was talking about going to the Oscar, she was like, and I'm going in this right here. I'm going in this that I got on. To me, that sounds like, in, in all that she was saying, that sounds like she want to be comfortable. That's what that sounds like. It sounds like she just want to be comfortable. She always had to, just like even when she do the, the, the she was like, she in her mind, when she go and do this other show, she I'm going to dress I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to dress like this. I'm going to wear my shorts and I'm going to wear, you know, dress comfortable. To me, it sounds like she wants to be comfortable. She wants to be comfortable. She done did all of that dressing up and looking this certain type of way for the, the media, you know what I'm saying? For the world. And it sounds like she just wants to be comfortable. And then also she mentioned I'm gonna take the wig off and I'm and I got this wig that I don't want. And I'ma just tell them that. Uh and 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 um sell it. Do you want to buy it? I'ma just sell it. It's the money that drove her. It's the she she was a she was a chaser of money. She did things just to make money. And see. If you really just look deep inside of her, that this what she's going through is showing you what happens when you love money more than you love God. You love money more than you love God. And I know a whole lot of people finna leave right now when I start talking about this right here. So if you don't want to hear nothing about God, then now is your time to go. Yes, now is your time to go. If you don't want to hear nothing about God, but I don't want it to. I don't want you to leave because God is real. God is real, and you can't serve two. You got to serve one or the other. It's either you're gonna serve God or you're gonna serve the enemy. Which 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 one which one are you gonna serve? So it 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 seems as though 
she chose to serve the enemy. She ch chose to serve money. She chose to serve. She chose to 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 lead her own life. That's what it. That's what it's. That's what it seems as though she she chose. She chose to leave her lead her own life with money, thinking that the money what was going to help her, but the money is not what's going to help her. See, looking at her right now is showing y'all what serving money will do for you. You know, hold on. Can be an idol. Exactly, Miss Merida. So listen, so last night, right, I'm glad we're talking about this because guess what? Last night, I went into my word and um, it was, it was about worship. It was about having the heart of worship and having a heart of worship means to surrender. And the the meaning of surrender is forget about forgetting about yourself. Forgetting about yourself. And not trying trying to lead your own life and allowing a God and allowing God to lead you. You know. It takes, it takes the teachings in the Bible to be able to learn to surrender yourself. And a lot of us, we don't want to pick up the Bible to learn the ways that we need to be. That's how we learn to be better. That's how we learn to change our ways. That's how we learn to serve God. That's how we learn how to gain a connection to him. That's how we, we learn to pray. That's how we learn what to pray for. That's how we learn. And I remember saying to myself, um, a couple, no, saying a couple of weeks ago, I, when I started reading the Bible, I have learned how to pray better. I, because I'm learning what to pray for. See, the more you read, the more you learn what to pray for. So, um, it says that if we give ourselves to him and not out of fear or duty, but in love and because he loved us first, that's why we should give ourselves to him because he loved us. He loved. Yes. He, he loved us. That's why we should surrender ourselves to, to him because he loved us. And the way that we know that God loved us all is because he sent his son, Jesus, to come and save us from our sin even while we were still sinning. Even while we were still sinning. He died for all of us because of our sin. Because God was so disgusted with humankind. He was, he was upset with everybody in the world. But then there were um, Noah. There were Noah and Noah was the only person that made God happy. And that's what made him change his mind about destroying humankind, not even creating humankind anymore, because he was happy with Noah for being obedient to him and loving him and honoring him and listening to him and his every word. So God said, you know what? I'm going to create more people like you. That's why Noah was in the play or the ark and all this stuff like that because 
everybody else. Everybody else around Noah, God was upset with them. God was so mad, he didn't even want to create humankind no more because he was like, he like, how can my people be like this? This is not how they're supposed to be. You know, I didn't create I didn't create them to be this way. So I was also learning that I'm 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 telling y'all about surrendering, surrendering and um what I learned in my lesson last night. So, like I said, for those of you that want to hear, I'm glad to tell you, but for those of you that don't want to hear, um, you can just sit back. I ain't even going to tell you to leave because I don't want you to leave because a lot of people, they don't know, and a lot of people, um, they don't want to read for themselves, but I'm, I'm here to tell you, like, if you go and start reading yourself, and an easy way to start finding certain things that um you should read because a lot of people they be like i don't know what i should go and read i don't know where to start i don't know what i should find no scriptures to go to nothing like that i'm gonna tell you this find you a book that talks about god that put uh, any author any author that you want that you feel like you want to read and if that author put scriptures in that book follow those scriptures because that's something that you're reading and then when you follow those scriptures it's going to lead you into finding out more things about god see that's what i'm doing i'm reading a book and i'm following the scriptures and it's just taking me to places where things that I need to see, I need to learn about, I need to read. So that's how I'm reading, learning to read the Bible. But anywho, um, so basically it's saying true worship is being, is bringing God pleasure. Happen, it happens when you give yourself completely to God. You should offer yourself as a living sac sacrifice to God, dedicated to the service and pleasing him. No, it's not a study Bible. The name of the book is called, let me show you. Okay, so the name of the book is called, it's by Rick Warren. And it's called The Perfect, The Purpose Driven Life. That's what it's called. So in this book, as I read, it has scriptures and stuff and it, and it gives you something to think about and it's asking you questions about your life. And the more and more you read, the more and more it's showing you how you should and shouldn't act. And then you, if you go and read those scriptures that he's leaving behind, you go and read these scriptures for yourself and get an understanding of it and you find you a study Bible. You find you a study Bible. See, this is my study Bible. So when I want to read the Bible, I read my study Bible. I read my study Bible to understand that chapter that I'm reading. But um, it was interesting last night when I was reading about this because it was talking about you having pride. It was talking about you having fear. It was talking about you having confusion. And those are the three barriers that keeps you from surrendering yourself to God. See, I was talking about which one are you going to serve? Are you going to serve the enemy or are you going to serve God? See, money is the root of all evil. So, if you have more love for money, then that's where that's that's the route that you're going to take. You're going to you're going to keep chasing that money, you're going to keep chasing, you really just chasing the evil. You chasing evil. But if you love God and allow God to take care of you, then you are surrendering yourself to him and chasing him and his way and his word and allowing him to um, lead you in a direction that he needs for you to go. And when you do that, you're not worried about what's the other, you know, the, the other things that's around you because you know that. God is going to take you. God is God have you on a prep path. God is going to direct you in the way that you need to go. You have no worries. That's why I said the other day to the lady that was saying that um, 
uh, she was embarrassed and, and she felt like she failed herself and stuff like that. How can you fail yourself when you, where have you failed yourself when you have faith? That's just, when you say that you failed yourself and you have faith, that means you're really saying that God failed you. God ain't going to fail us. As long as you got faith, God's not going to fail you. So, anywho, um, so it's that's the three barriers that will keep you from surrendering yourself to God, which is fear, pride, and confusion. Trust is an essential ingredient to surrender. You have to trust God. If you don't trust God, then you're not going to believe that he's going to do what he said he would do for you. You have to put all your trust in him and know how could you not put your trust in God, but you can find that you put your trust in fellow man. You could put your trust in your mama. You could put your trust in your daddy. You could put your trust in your husband. You could put your trust in your wife, um, girlfriend or boyfriend, friend, counselor, teacher. You could put trust in all these people on earth that could fail you, but you don't want to take that chance and put trust in someone that can really help you. Those ones that are even your mama and your daddy. These, these, those people can, can fail you any day. They could, they could make up in their mind. They don't want to do nothing for you no more, or be there for you no more, or, or keep your secret sacred no more. They want to let it out, but God ain't going to do that. God going to forever keep everything between you and him sacred. So you won't surrender yourself to God unless you trust him. But you can't trust him until you know him better. And how you get to know God better is you got to get into your word. You got to, you got to, you got to start reading. And the more you read, it's only going to tell you the good of God and the things that he will do for you. That's how you, that's how you get to know God better. I didn't know, I didn't know God like that. But I, like I told y'all, I always had my mustard seed of faith. I always had a mustard seed. So the more and more I'm reading, the more and more I'm learning, and the more and more I'm getting excited about it because it's showing me that in my worldly ways that I have, I don't have to worry about nothing. I don't have to worry about nothing. And I was excited to tell my husband about this. And my husband, he just sitting there looking at me last night. I was having Bible study and with myself and stuff. And he was like, what you doing? I was like, I'm having Bible study. And he was like, "You, I see you love God. You love God. That's what he said. He said, you love God. I'm like, yeah, I love God. And the more and more I learn about him, the more and more I'm learning to love him even more. You know, wanting more and more. I'm wanting more and more of him. The more and more I read, because it's showing me, it's talking about me as I read. It's talking about me. Things that I worry about, it's telling me, you shouldn't even be worrying about this if you trust, if you have faith. You know? So, um, fear, fear, fear keeps us from surrendering. But love casts out all fear. You can't have fear. God proves his love for us in, in that while we still were sinners. Christ died for us. That's how he proved that he loved us so much by sending his son Jesus to come and do a work for him. And when the work was done, Jesus had to die for us for all of our sins. Because like I said, God was not going to create mankind even more, human, human race. And just like, um, just like it was saying, um, uh, it wasn't for the black man, for the white man, for the, for the, for the, or no kind of nationality or nothing. It was for all human race. So that made me think, right? <laughs> That made me think about that thing. You know how you get applications and stuff like that, and they ask you, is you black, white, Hispanic, uh, 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 you know, these different race, right? And 
It made me think about that, hun. I'm like, they need to put a human on there. <laughs> because we are all the same. No matter what our nationality, race, or whatever, we is all the same human kind. We human. We all the same. Color don't matter. Your place that you are from, raised, lived, born does not matter. If we are, if we, God knew that he needed all these different regions because this makes up the different people that he wanted to see. We all is beautiful because he, to him, because he created us in his own image for one and also in the way that he wanted us to be. So, and God, he is entertained in our ways. We is just like watching the TV to him. All of us. Because he created, he created us to be ourselves. And the more and more we be ourselves, the more and more we are pleasing to God. God don't want us to act like the next person. He created you to be you, not be Susie, not for you to act like Meredith, not for you to act like Tika, not for you to act like Miss Let Go, not for you to act like Megan the, the Stallion, Beyonce, not for you to act like Jay-Z or P. Diddy or all them other folks, not for you to act like nobody but yourself. Being yourself, God is pleased with that. So, and everything that not, not like RJ. So being yourself, God is pleased with that. Because everything that we do, we should do it with pleasure to please God. Be thankful for the way that you are. And that's another thing that God is teaching me. You know, I I am me. But also there were times and still, and, and I'm still and I'ma say still is because I want to correct that. But still is times that I question the person that I am. The ways that I am, how I act, how I look, how I, you know what I'm saying? We all have something about ourselves where we question why this or why that? Why why am I this size? Or why is my hair not straight? Or why is my hair not longer? Why is my eyes is not slanted? Or why is my teeth is not this? Or why this? Why that? When you question that, you questioning God. You're questioning God because God created you to be exactly like you are in what we call our flaws. Our flaws is beautiful to God. So that means that it's supposed to be beautiful to us. Just because you see another person this way or another person that way, you think that this person has straight teeth. If you had straight teeth, there's going to be something else that you find about yourself that you don't like. So God said this. God said this. I want to say it exactly how it was. I want to say it exactly. Okay, I I I I I get to it. But um, God said this: if you can't accept yourself for the way that you are and want to have the characteristics of somebody else, then you start building up.
take um in your heart um it's it's, it's certain words I want to use. Y'all know, honey. I don't, I, I don't be normal words sometimes, but I want to tell y'all these exact words. You start building up these words in your heart, and. You start feeling this certain type of way. Wait, where am I at? Okay. We're supposed to accept our human humanity intellectually, but not emotionally. See, when we don't have certain characteristics and we can't accept ourselves for the way that we are, we start dealing with it emotionally. And when you start dealing with it emotionally, and you want to be taller or shorter, smaller or stronger, more talented or more beautiful or more wealthier. We want to have it all and do it all. And we become upset when it doesn't happen. Did y'all hear that though? When you want to be something that you're not or have something that you don't have, you want to have it all and you want to do it all. You become upset when it don't happen. How many times that y'all can say that you, when you really think about it, there was times that you really get upset because you think that God's not hearing you or you want a child and God's not having given you that child. You want a better job, but you feel like God haven't given you that better job. You want a certain house, but you ain't got it. A car, you ain't got it. A, 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 a certain figure, you ain't got it. A look, you ain't got it. A hair, you ain't got it. It's so many things that people is just not happy with. And when you, and you don't get it, what happens is, then you notice that we respond with a... Uh, with envy, jealousy, and self-pity. When you don't have those things, that's why people end up jealous of the next person. Because you end up jealous of that next person because of you want what they got. You want to look how they look. You want to you wanna drive what they driving. You want a house like they got. You want a husband like they have, a girlfriend like they have, a wife like they have, children like they got. And it goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on. But what is for you is for you. What is for you is for you. What's for that other person is for that other person. Sometimes I remember there was times I wonder, God, what you know, why you didn't bless me to keep a child, but you blessed this person with children. They don't need no kids. They ain't fit enough. They ain't, they this, they that, you know. But then you gotta, you gotta, you got, you gotta, you gotta look at that thing sometimes. Yeah, to us that person is this and that, but God knew what it took to turn that person around. God knew what to give that person to slow them down, to make them a better person, to change their ways, to take their focus off of whatever it was that they had their focus on that were distracting him from them, from, from cause distracting them from him. So God bless people that we feel shouldn't have children with children because it's something that he is trying to change within them to make them a better person. He know the paths of their life. So he gives us certain things to direct us in that path. 
he knows what if he give us certain if he do certain things it's going to steer us off the wrong way he knows when we want to do better he know he knows that compared to the ones he just like the ones that just uh crash out they they crash out and 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 end up losing their life lives behind stupidity god had given them chance after chance after chance warning after warning is saving them time after time after time we just like children no matter what age we is that's why i've been telling y'all for a long time like no matter what understanding that you have with god the easiest way to understand him is compare him to your mother and your father what you would or wouldn't do to them or in front of them or at ways that you act and stuff like that it's the same thing with god times 10 same thing and i was saying this and didn't even know but common sense only tell you that you know what i'm saying it only takes common sense it only takes common sense if you don't know the word treat him just like you would treat your parents because in all actuality he really is our father he really is so treat him just like treat him treat him just like that but those ones that crash out they did it to themselves and then they leave the mothers and the fathers and the family members to grieving and crying and heart having heartache and pain behind them having to leave us but it was nobody but their fault because first of all god is not going to force them to obey he's not going to force them to obey everything that we do is a decision we make up in our own conscience right mind to obey god or not he's not going to force us to obey him it's up to you whether you want to obey him or not all those times that he was saving you from the trouble that you was in and and all those times that he kept trying he he kept he kept giving you fair warnings fair warning after warning after warning after warning time after time after time that was the time for you to get it right but then when you find that you start going a thousand miles per hour down this path that you just can't and you drive it so fast you just can't you won't even you can't you won't even know how to stop but you drive you just imagine yourself in a car and you and, and you going in and if and, and a dashboard had a thousand miles per hour and you in this car and you just driving going a thousand miles an hour and your brakes done gave out but you on a you on a you was on a on a on a winding road you're on the wind the road and you're trying to keep control of yourself and this car going a thousand miles an hour. Just imagine what it's like trying to do that by yourself. God has washed his hands. That's what it's like when God washed his hands with you and say, you know what? You want to do what you want to do? I'm going to let you go down your own road. You try to get off of it by yourself. You can't do it by yourself. You're going to crash however many times. How many times are you going to crash? you be like, oh, I, I, I made it through that one. Oh, I thought that one was about to take me out. You know what I'm saying? You get back in that, you get you get back on that road and you you steady riding. You steady riding, you steady riding. You hit something else. That didn't take you out. Whew, I'm going to keep on going. I'm going to keep on going. I survived that one. It's going to stop eventually. This, gonna, this car going to stop eventually. That car ain't going to stop until you decide, I can't do this by myself. I need the help from, Lord. I, from the Lord. I need to listen. I need him. That's who's going to stop that car. That's, that car is that reckless life that you is living, trying to make it on your own. 
not listening to God, not being obedient to him. God give us chance after chance after chance after chance to do right. You find that people uh, that's that's going down the road, you know, they 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 let's just say they're selling drugs or something like that, and they go to court. They they, they maybe they they get stopped this time, and they don't find nothing in the car. That was God. That was God, cause you know that you had some up in there, but that was God. Then another time. You, you, you get pulled over by the police. You were supposed to get a ticket, but you didn't get no ticket that time. Or maybe you did get a ticket the next time. You, it happened again. You get a ticket the next time. It be his warnings. It be his warnings until we get enough warnings from him. And he said, okay, you don't want to obey? I'm going to cut you off. I'm going to cut you off because you is insisting on doing what you want to do. So I'm going to let you just do that without my help. So back to what we was talking about over here. So yeah, that's what happens when um you want things that you don't have. You uh and 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 uh won't wait, won't you know, want things that you don't have, you start building up envy. And stuff like that. So. One thing. That caused so much stress in our lives is. The desire to have complete control. We. Amen. We have the desire to have complete control because. We want to trust God. But then the fear of trusting him because he's not working in the time or as quick as we looking for him to work. We try to, we like, you know what? I don't know what's going to happen. So I got to, I got to, I got to get back in this driver's seat. I got to take over because it don't seem like that, you know, God finna come through for me. It don't happen in our timing. Nothing that happens for us is in our time because it's only in God's time because he want to show you what he has done for you. A lot of times you will find that something that we have been praying and asking God for that it seemed like he wasn't, wasn't going to come through for. It may have happened like the last second, the last day at the deadline, just a miracle just doesn't happen. He won't, he he did it just to show you. He did he he allowed that deadline to come up that last day, the 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 last couple of seconds, the it happened like that because he want to show you what he can do for you. If he did it in the time that he wanted us to do it, not I mean that that we wanted us for him to do it, nine times out of ten, we'll probably think that we did it our own self. Because if we say on this day, at this time, at this hour, I'm going to buy me a house. And if at that, that day and that hour, you get that house, you won't think that you did that. But when some, but when you, but when problems start happening and coming in and things don't start looking the way that it, that you think is, you know, supposed to look and, you know, it start you start getting scared and, and 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 stuff just start looking like it just ain't finna happen, but then eventually it happens, not in your time, but in God's time, then you realize that one nobody but God. That's when you're supposed to give God the praise for that. You ain't supposed to give the realtor, the banker, the none of them the praise for that. Because when God do stuff and He move in your life. You best trust and believe he going to move everybody out the way that you think that is going to be there for you or do something for you. He going to move them out the way because he don't need for them to get the glory for what he be done did for you. He trying to show you what he can do for you. So he can't allow though nobody to get the praise for what he has done for you. 
One thing about God, that's what he wants for us to do is praise him, worship him, thank him at all times. In the good times and the bad. Thank him for every day for your leg feeling good. Because one thing about it, when that leg ain't doing good, you're going to be like, oh, Lord, help me, Lord, Jesus, help me. Help me, Lord. Oh, Lord, just, oh, Lord, just get this leg back right for me. These pain show hit me, Lord. I don't want to have no surgery on this knee, Lord. Lord, just help me, Lord. Lord, I need you right now, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I need you, Lord. Help me. But then all of a sudden you realize you stop doing all that. All of a sudden, before you know it, you ain't even talking to the Lord about the leg no more. Because you don't feel that pain no more. That pain be done went away before you even know it. And you ain't even realize when your leg had done stop hurting. When you when you ain't even realize when you done stop complaining and crying about your leg. You ain't even realize it. But while your leg is still doing good, you need to thank you, Lord, for this. Thank you, Lord, for not for me not having these pains, that pains in my leg. Thank you, Lord, that I'm able to walk. Thank you, Lord, that I'm able to get up today. Thank you, Lord, that I don't, I'm not aching. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank him for that. We can't just wait till we got problems to 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 cry and ask him for stuff. Thank him while we got while we while we is in good health you know so anywho moving right along surrendering is not for cowards or doormats it means it doesn't mean giving up rational thinking so when they say surrendering is not for a coward or a doormat, you know how a lot of people, they be like, you know, I just let folks just run all over me and stuff like that. It does not mean that you act irrationally or all out of character just because you surrender, you know, uh, yourself to God. Like you still have to know how to act when you surrender yourself to God. You got to, you still got to humble yourself. You still got to bite your tongue. You still got to know when to put a person in a place and how God wants you to put them in a place. Because first of all, he's going to order your tongue and the things that you need to say to back them up off you. He going he gonna to do that. So that's why we got to learn to humble ourselves in certain situations because we will be we will be put to test we will be put to test when we learn to humble ourselves to god it says that God wants to use your unique personality. Oh, it said, wait a minute. First to say, surrendering is not repressing your personality. God wants to use your unique personality rather than diminish. Surrendering enhances it. It enhances your personality that God has given you. The more we let God take over, the more truly ourselves we become. Because he made us. When when I turn to Christ, or when you turn to Christ, you give up yourself. You give up yourself to his personality that you first begin to have. And that's when you first begin to have your real your own real personality, is when you give yourself up to Christ. Surrendering, surrendering is best demonstrated in obedience. You have to be obedient to God when you surrender, when you decide to surrender yourself. That is basically what it is. You being obedient to God. Whatever it is that God asks you to do, no matter what it is, you may be asked, you may be put in certain situations that you feel like you don't know. Hold on. You may be put in certain situations that you don't know that you really want to do. 
whether it's a certain amount of money or a certain act that he asks you to do, a certain person that he may take you ask you to take care of. You may be like, you know what, I don't know if this is what I want to do, but it's not about you because you're doing what God asks you to do. You're doing what God asks you to do. And that's why you find that when people is out here doing things that God asks them to do and they being taken care of, you see the blessings that's on that person because they is being obedient to God and allowing God to um, take care of them. Even when it seems like that you cannot handle what God has assigned you to do. No matter what that situation, I'm telling you, y'all just don't know. It's been plenty of times that I done cried and um, wanted to give up and all of that behind the assignment that God has set me out to do. I know that what I am doing is nothing but an assignment from God. I know that. So I have to complete that task. I have to be obedient. I have to continue to be do what it is that he want me to do, even when I don't want to do it. And that's what it, that's what it's called surrendering yourself to God. I want to I want to get to the point where I have completely surrendered myself to God. That means that I am obedient in every way that I'm supposed to be. I ain't all the way there, but God dang it, honey, I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. Um, surrendering. Um, people obey God every word, even when it don't make sense. That's why they tell you to, I've heard this before, but now I've read it. And I've heard um, that um, serving God a lot of times means looking crazy for God, looking crazy to other people. Because you believe in things that you don't see. You talk about things that sounds crazy to other people. I'd rather look crazy for God than try to look a certain way for somebody else because of what God is showing me. Because at the end of the day, this, this man next to you can't save you. If God told me he going to bless me with this or bless me with that or do this for me or he wanted me to do this certain thing, I have to follow him and believe that what it is that he want me to do is, is, is the way, the right way, the right thing to do. And not listen to the next person say, hey, I don't know about that right there. That, you sound crazy about that. See, that's just like, oh, Noah. Noah. No, Noah believed in God. Noah was set out on a job. God decided that he wanted to save man. He wanted to cre uh, create mankind um, like Noah. So God had told Noah to build an ark because that because he was going to flood the land. And Noah knew that he was a long way from the ocean. He didn't know how that how you know he was going to get that boat to the ocean. So Noah and his neighborhood was building a boat. And it wasn't no certain kind of boat. God ordered Noah to build this boat the way that he wanted him to build it, the size he wanted to build it. And also God told Noah all he wanted him to save. Um, uh, what? Uh, two of every animal and the animals was well anyway. So yeah, so Noah, so 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 Noah did that, but Noah had to look crazy to other people. If God told me today. Tion, I want you to go out there and build a boat out there because, um, and, and I want you to build a boat biggest, long as your street. In the middle of the road, I want you to build this boat. I'm, I'm going to look crazy to the people around me because they don't understand the assignment that God has um, set me out on. That was, that was Noah. 
So that's what that's what that's that's what I'm telling you. You have to look crazy to other people because you know what God asks you to do. You have to fulfill that that whatever it is that God has told you to do. You have to. So of course you're going to look crazy to the next person. And of course there's going to be people that's going to be coming up you, to you and try to discourage you from doing that. But guess what? That ain't nothing but the enemy working through those people. People be used by the enemy and don't even be knowing that they be being used. They don't even know it. That's just like those people that comes in here, that's coming in here, allowing the enemy to use them, saying that I wish that all the money go to um her husband or that's what she get. That ain't nothing but the enemy. You can't allow him to use you like that. Speaking those words ain't nothing but evil. Why would you wish anything like that on anybody in whatever situation they're in. Nobody here on earth is perfect. All of us make mistakes. So why would you wish anything bad on anybody but good? It's not right. You and you allowing the enemy to use you and you may feel like ain't nothing wrong with you because first thing that people want to try to throw up in the front of being evil is I, I, I got a freedom of speech. It's my opinion. I can say what I want to say. I can say what I want to say. It's my opinion. My opinion, my opinion. Yeah, your opinion, but you can keep that to yourself. See, a lot of times, see, this is what gets me about people. They want to say, I, this is for my good, and I just want to tell you for your good, this is my opinion, but this is what I think that you should do. And they want to leave their opinion in the comments for the whole world. For all the thousands of people that may ever see the video, they want to leave their opinion in the comment that they know is going to be negative to you or, or, or try to bring you down or be draining to you or discouraging <coughs> or hurt you in such a way. They want to leave those, opinion, th those opinions in the comments for the world to see. But if you meant me any good, you would do that in private you will do that in private you will leave that comment on a, in the email where nobody but me and you will know that so your opinion does not always have to be stated for everybody to see it seems like that you're looking for a reaction when you want to state an opinion sometimes sometimes you got to know when to keep your mouth closed. Sometimes you got to know that just because you got an opinion, it don't matter. Exactly. And that's what it's called when you're doing it over the internet. Pulling that person aside. Getting them one-on-one -on -one and letting them know from your heart how you really feel. Not in the comments. For everybody else to see, for somebody else to be like, you show right, you show this, you show that. You got to think about your actions because sometimes you allow that enemy to use you and you don't even see where you let him use you at. You got to have common sense. You got to have common sense. So, anywho, um... Oh, so nothing is done in our own time. So the Bible says, surrender yourself to the Lord and wait patiently. When you wait patiently, that means that you have faith. That means that you trust the Lord. That means that you believe and you know that he's going to do whatever it is that you asked of him or, you know, because God want to do it. But he's not going to do it in his timing. Certain things, he's not going to do it as quickly because he's like, you know what? If I give this to them, I really want them to know I gave them everything he do for us. He want us to know that he did it for us. But certain things we have to work for. 
You ask him for it. You got to work for it. Show him that you really want that. Show him that you trust him. We could say all day long, yeah, I trust the Lord. I trust the Lord. I trust the Lord. Yeah, Lord, I trust you. I know you're going to do it, Lord. But really, in our heart, we may not be trusting him as much as we saying it with our mouth. So God put that mouth and make you put the words to action. Come on, Lord. Come on, come on. Come on, God. He make you put the words to action. He make him show he he make you show him do you mean what you're saying? He make you show him that. And while you and while he's making you show him that, he's making you a believer. He's making you a believer because when you start going through and that storm starts swirling and it just start getting rough, who you got to depend on? Who you got to depend on when you think that you finna run to your savior? Oh, your mama finna help you. Your daddy finna help you. Your auntie finna help you. Your counselor finna help you. Your niece finna help you. Somebody finna help you with this. Somebody finna be your escape route. But then next thing you know, the people that you thought was going to be your escape route let you down. And they ain't even there for you. And now you mad with them because they ain't there for you because you knew at any time that you went to them, they was going to be there for you. But then this particular time, they ain't there for you. God made them push back. God made them say no. And they ain't even know God made them say no. They ain't, they, they probably would have never even thought that they would even tell you no. They probably would have never thought it. That, 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 you at that point in time became an inconvenience to them, but it wasn't for the worst. It was only for the best of you because God did not want to give you the easy way out because if you had that easy way out, then that will, was messing up his whole plan. See, God got a plan for everything. So it's messing up his whole plan. We got to we got to walk according to God's plan. No matter how hard or how rough the the the, the storm gets, we got to keep walking. We got to because at the end of the day, there is a reward for us. You don't say him, you don't ask God for this. But how you think that you are gonna give up on what He don't ask you for because you don't want to put in the work to get to to get it? You can't you can't you can't. That's that's called being a spoiled child. See, you see how I'm, you see what I'm saying? See, it's going right back to you being his child. So you trying to be a spoiled little brat and want him to just give it to you. He ain't just finna give it to you like that. He wants you to work for it. He wants you to earn it. He wants you to appreciate it. He wants you to know where it came from. And also he wants you to give him the praise in the end. Lord, I thank you. I thank you because it seemed like that there was no way, but you made a way. You made a way out of no way. I knew for a fact that I couldn't do this by myself. When you know that, when you speak the words, you know it wasn't nobody but God that did this. You know that. So anywho, that's why you got to keep on trusting, trucking and trusting God. So, oh, this another one. This another one. You know you surrender yourself to God when you rely on God to work things out instead of trying to manipulate others, force your agenda, and control the situation. How many, how many, how many, how many of y'all have tried to do either one of those things? And I know you have, because if you have not given yourself to God, you don't try to do at least one of them. You don't but try, you don't try to get somebody else to let you do something or give you something. Just like what I was just talking about, manipulate others, force your agenda or control, control the situation yourself. So the Bible says, surrender yourself 
and wait patiently, like I said. Instead of trying harder, trust, trust more. Trust more. The difficult area of people, the difficult area for people to surrender is their money. See, that's why we got on this topic. We're talking about um, Wendy. Because it was about the money. It was about who she chose to serve. You know what I'm saying? It was about it was about that. Yes, she's dealing with dementia, but also she's dealing with her actions. That she, the 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 route that she chose to take, even though to her, I ain't even gonna go on that part right now. But the route that she chose to take. We all have to pay for our actions, the decisions that we make. And it seems as though she is paying for that. But she's also suffering with dementia, which could have been something that was already gonna happen to her you know so um many have thought i want to oh this is a good one because see i got a lot of older people that watch me so listen to this right here y'all listen to this many have thought i want to live for god but i also want to earn enough money to live comfortably and retire someday this right here hit home with what we were just talking the other day, talking about the other day. And I was saying that if God was to bless me to be a rich woman, I wouldn't be using my money wastefully and stuff like that and saving it and all this and that. And I was also saying that I am thankful for what I have. You know, I am thankful. But this also showed me to have a different mindset because if I surrender myself to God then I don't have to worry about being rich I don't have to worry about being wealthy hold on because I'm about to go ahead of myself let me let me finish this real quick so um to to um retire someday retirement is not the goal of a surrendered life because it competes with God for the primary attention for your lives. Jesus said, you cannot serve God and money. And wherever your treasure is, your heart will be there. Your heart will be there also. So that's how I, like I'm saying, that's how I had started talking about Wendy, like I said, because I saw where with Wendy Williams, it seems that she is crying from her soul. It seems she's crying from the soul, from the inside, because she's talking about, like I said, she's talking about People just people just looking at it for what it is. I'm looking at it beyond what it looks like to everybody else. That's just how I take. I don't know why, but that's just how I look at stuff all the time. I look at stuff beyond what people shows me. So it looks to me as though, like I said, that she want to be comfortable. But I don't even know if she even know how to say that because, like I said, um, she's talking about I'm gonna be I'm gonna wear this right here. I'm gonna be dressed just like this right here on my show, and I'm gonna take my shoes off and I'm gonna show my feet. It's like she want the world to just see her for who she is and don't even care because she had to hide for so long. She had to hide for so long. So she just want to be free. She just want to be free. And then she mentions about taking the wig off and then selling it to somebody. And then that right there speaks of the money. What she, what she, where, where, what she's following. 
You know what I'm saying? What she was chasing. She was, she did anything for the money, but she said, I'm going to take the wig off. But when she said, I'm going to take the wig off, that also looked like comfort to me too, because I'm tired of wearing this hair. I'm tired of wearing this wig. I'm tired of, I'm tired of wearing this makeup. She even told Black China, look, I don't have no, what she said, I don't have no makeup on or something like that. And she, she took her hair off and she said, look, I, I, I'm, and she started pulling the wig off and stuff. And, you know, and then she was like, uh, it's, it's, it's like she just said, I'm just tired. I'm tired of having to look this way for these people. I want to be myself. I want to be comfortable. I want to be at peace. That's what it looks like that Wendy is saying. And then she started talking about the money thing and started talking about people love me and, uh, and, 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 and that she was famous. Like she starts talking about that, right? And that shows the other side of her where it's talking about the money, the, what, what she allowed to rule her. See, a lot of people, y'all looking at that for, for, oh, oh, shucks. Like, dang, not Wendy Williams. Like, Wendy Williams' situation ain't no different than okay. Wendy Williams' situation ain't no different from somebody that don't have money. Only thing it is is this is a rich, famous woman that had a show, talked about people in their lives, laughed about it, judged people, and all. And then next thing you know, out of nowhere, boom, she ain't in her right mind. So now they want to take her situation and run with it. Oh, it's drugs. Oh, it's the or 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 oh, it's um alcohol. Oh, it's um she, she crazy or oh, it's this. Oh, it's that. No, this woman got what her life was destined to be. She was already gonna have that. All these people around her, they just want to get paid off of her situation. They just want to get paid off of her situation. And in the midst of uh, everybody around her wanting a piece of the good while the getting is good until they can't get no more from the, 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 the producers, from the, 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 the media, from everybody that she's dealing with in New York that's around her, then the family that's in, in Miami, her family that's in Miami is no different than anybody else's family that does stuff like this when something happens to somebody and they think that they're going to get a piece of the pie too. And what it is is the family allegedly could be mad because that everybody else is getting a piece of the pie and they ain't got no assets. They can't put their hands in the pot. They can't put their hands in, in the cookie jar. So they mad. They mad because all those other people shouldn't be getting this stuff. They shouldn't be getting this stuff because in reality, how many cases do you know that if anything was to happen to somebody that passed away, lose their mind, stuff like that, this is supposed to go to the children. But courts decided to take that privilege away even from them, from and one of the family members and all that them. It sounds like this is a case of get back. We get we 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 get we're getting her back. We're getting her back for all that she did. But they better be careful though. They better be careful. And see, a lot of people don't want to see it for, for, for what it really is. Because everybody got their day. Everybody got their time. And everybody going to have to pay for what they is paying for. And the one that really stuck out to me the most that I was looking at is that girl that took her and went to um L.A. You could see it all over her. You could see, I'm telling you, you could see it all over her that that girl was just 
putting her hand in the cookie jar. She really was putting her hand in the cookie jar. And also, to me, it's like she was sent by somebody to expose Wendy even more for they paycheck. That's what it looks like. Uh, y'all may be looking at me like I'm crazy. I'm just looking at it beyond what y'all see. I'm just saying. But that's what it looks like. Everybody around her got their hand trying to put it got their hand in the cookie jar, or they trying to put their hand in the cookie jar. And the ones that's taking away um uh, access to family and stuff like that, they trying to put their hands in the cookie jar more than the ones that is got their hands in the cookie jar. They trying to have more. Y'all, y'all, y'all know, y'all know how to, y'all know how the system can work. Y'all already know how the system, system can work. Just cause this woman ain't got, just cause this woman got money don't mean that it, 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 uh, it's any different when it goes up that ladder. Ain't nothing no different. If anything, it's even worse. Though. That's why we seeing what we seeing today. Because it's even worse with the more you got and the more money that you got. It's even worse. And then for her to get dementia, oh, she messed up, baby. Don't sit here and talk about people. This this what they this what they thinking. She got dementia. Don't sit here and don't talk about people. Got kids. She ain't got no will. She ain't got nothing set up where. We can't take this and take that and say this and say that because we got power over all this right here. Child, please. That does a sad case. That does a sad case. But you want to know what that shows? That shows that I'm wrong for what I'm going to say. Correct me in the midst of me saying it when well, I'm wrong. That sounds like that that woman was greedy. It sounds like she was greedy. If it is the way that they put it, If it is the way that they put it, for her to have nothing set up knowing that she got all this stuff that she got, all this money, even her cars, her, 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 her house or apartment, whatever, you got too many people around you that you taking care of. She have too many people around her that she's taking care of. Too much going for herself. To not have certain things in place for certain people. Being that you have a family that you love. And she said that she loved her family. But being that a family that she loved. Children, that she, a son that she still have. People that still care about you. But you have nothing in place for nobody. But you got all this stuff. Who did you have plans on leaving this stuff too. Because you ain't going to be able to take it with you. So you love your family so much. Who do you have in place to for anything? Ain't like she was a young work woman that where there was that whether that this wasn't something that she needed to think about. So, what does she have in place? It seemed as though she must not have nothing in place for them to be able to come and snatch everything away from her like that. You mean to tell me your kids, your son, your sister, your daddy, your... Like, nope, like, even if it was just the immediate people, nobody, nope, no, nope, nobody can 
help her in the situation that she in? Nobody. She's stuck. That sounds like karma. That sounds like karma. Because of her greediness. And because of what she allowed to drive her. And that was her money. That was her money. She allowed her money to be the head of her life. Instead of and, and probably thought that everything she, she probably, honey, I don't know. I don't, I don't even want to even throw the probably's on there, but you know, mm -mm. <laughs> so, yeah. But yeah, you got to, God say, you can't serve two. You got to serve one. You either going to serve God or you're going to serve money. One or the other. And whatever, whatever you serve the most, that's where your heart going to be. So if your heart is on the money, you ain't worrying about God taking care of you. You ain't worrying about him taking care of you. But I thank the Lord for this here today and that and what I learned last night because it taught me that no matter what, surrender yourself to him. Surrender yourself to him. Give yourself to him fully and completely. Because when you do that, just like we say, we want to be wealthy so that we'll have us a good retirement. We want to live comfortable or good. We want to have this or that. But all that don't matter. See, all that we talking about money, that don't matter. Because when you give yourself, you surrender yourself to God, you trust and believe that God is going to take care of you. You ain't got to worry about nothing. God going to put things in place where you will be taken care of. And I hope that, and, and now that I'm saying this right here, what I'm saying, I'm talking to someone. Right now, I'm finna say something to someone. I'm talking to you right now. I told you, you got to step out on faith and let God take care of you in your situation. And no matter what the situation looks like, no matter how low your funds may be or how you feel that you ain't living how you want to live or whatever the situation may be, you got to continue to trust God because you decided that I'm going to step out on faith. So why let go of faith? Because things is starting to look a little funny. You can't let go of faith when things start looking a little funny. It's going to look like that in order to help build your faith even more. So continue to have faith that God is going to take care of everything. Because at the end of the day, no matter what the situation looks like, God is going to put certain things, certain people in place to take care of you. No matter what you think that you don't want someone to do for you. Sometimes you could be turning down your own help and getting in God's way because of your pride. Don't let your pride keep God from taking care of you. God going to take care of you just to show you believe and you trust and you know 
that he is there no matter what, without a shadow of a doubt. That's why you got to have unwavering faith. Can't nothing come and shake your faith. Can't nothing come and shake your faith. Because as long as you have unwavering faith, anything that happens around you that looks like it's going to make your situation turn around for the worse, it's not going to affect you in that way. It's not going to be able to get to you mentally. You're not, a, you're not supposed to allow that to get to you mentally. Because God going to take care. He going to provide. He going to make sure everything is okay because you trust him. You trust him enough to do what he say he will do. He know exactly what we need. And he also knows what we want. But we have to trust him. No matter what the situation looks like. We got to. So I just wanted to say that right there because, you know, I know that, um, you know, sometimes people's faith gets stirred up. People's faith gets stirred up and they wonder, um, dang, I want to, I want to go back to word or, or dang, I, 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 I need more income or, or dang, I don't know how my light bill going to get paid or, you know, can't be worrying about that. Pray about it. Talk to God. And um, tell him what you need. Tell him how you feel. Tell him to take that fear away from you. Tell him that you're scared. Tell him that you 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 confused. Ask him to remove that confusion from you. Ask him to 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 take the fear away from you. Ask him to tell him exactly what you need. Be specific in everything. Yes, he knows it all, but he needs for you to come to him like you mean it. Like you really want it. That's why you got to be specific because when you be specific, that means that you really need it. It's not like, oh, be specific with God because God don't know. No, God know. But you got to be specific because when you specific about something, that means that you really want it. So be specific with him. Tell him what it is that's going on. The problems that you have. Like he don't know nothing. The same way that you would call that girlfriend on the phone or that cousin or mama, daddy, whoever on the phone. The same way you would call them on the phone and talk about your problems and hope that they don't tell nobody. It's the same way that you're supposed to go to God and talk to him and tell him your problems and tell him what you want. And when you do that, and when you do that, wait patiently. Wait patiently because in your waiting... You trust him and you have faith that God going to do what it is that he need to do for you. Oh, trust and believe. Like they say in nine days, he going to stand on business. Okay? He, 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 he going to stand on business. So, if it ain't working out in the time that you looking forward to, don't worry about it. And... I know this right here is a hard pill for that y'all for y'all to swallow right now. Cause I know that this will be a hard pill for me to swallow too. But if things don't work out the way that we think that it's supposed to work out, maybe it wasn't me for the work. Because God meant for us to have something else. God meant for us to have better. So, no troubles, no storms, no none of that lasts forever. You got to keep pushing. You got to keep fighting. You got to keep walking. walking you got to have faith. You got to keep on going. You got to keep doing your part to get there. You got to put... You,
Hold on, let me go use the bathroom because I'm trying to say what I'm trying to say to y'all in a certain kind of way. Hold on. Still didn't come to me, but I know what I want to say. One more, y'all. We'll be done reached it. You got to. You got to work. You got to work. You got to keep trusting. You got to keep pressing. Whatever it is. But don't get in God's way. Don't get in God's way. God going to lead you in the direction you need to go. When you start trying to do stuff outside of what it is that he wants you to do, want you, want for you, you're going to notice that it ain't going to work out. And I know this for a fact. Because it, it happened to me because God had me on a journey where he was trying to teach me something. And a lot of things that you hear is going to come to your remembrance. And when those sayings that you hear that you never even knew the meaning of come to your remembrance, God going to teach you what those sayings meant. So, um, it ain't going to work out. It ain't going to work out if it ain't meant to work. So, don't try to force it to work when it's supposed to work. I'm telling you, there were so many times when I was on my journey that I tried to step in the way of God because I did not know to allow God to lead me. I didn't know to allow I didn't know to allow God to lead me, lead me. I was in his way every single time. But the more I was in his way, the more I was being denied, the more I was being, the more things just wasn't happening the way that it was meant to happen. And not saying that when I was being denied, worse of things was happening. Um, but I don't know if that was part of me. I know that was part of my fear. I know that was part of my fear by trying to find other resources. But when I was being shut down out of my fear with the things that I was doing, that was God trying to show me that that wasn't the route that he needed for me to take. So when I stopped trying to take my own route, that's when what God wanted for me started coming to me. And I want to say that's really how it's going to happen. So when the things that start coming to you, when things start coming to you, that's when you, that's what you need to act on. Act on that. Because that's what I did. I didn't know this. I didn't know that that's what I was doing at the time. But stuff started coming to me. And when I got on that path, right? Because it seemed as though that was the only thing that I needed to do was get on that path. God led that person to me. And 
I stopped trying to take my own route, which was going out myself, trying to find another way, right? When I stopped doing that and that person came to me and I, I did what that person asked me to do, which I'm talking about the house, house buying. I'm telling you, like, right now with the person that I am today, my house buying experience played a major role in my life. Because it taught me to have faith. It taught me who God, God taught me who he was and what he would do for me. That's why I'm telling you what I'm doing, what I'm telling you now, because I'm thinking back on that time. And the lady came to my house. The people came to my house to, to buy, but the same lady that came to my house was my realtor. God sent me my realtor. I didn't have to go find my realtor. I didn't know that I was going to be in the process of buying me a house. Because I was scared of doing that. If you go back on my videos years ago when I was over in my other house, I was sitting down at the table and y'all was talking to me about house buying and stuff like that. And I was just so excited and scared at the same time. And then after that conversation, I was like, I don't know if I want to do this. Then maybe like a month later, I was faced with that situation. I was faced with that situation. So God sent her to me. Yes, those people was there to buy my house. She was showing them the house that I was in, that I was renting. But she ended up my realtor. And she was the path that God wanted me to be on. So once I jumped on that train and started doing what, the lady was telling me to do, but God was telling that God was working through that lady. God was working through her and not knowing that she was, she didn't even know she was being used, but God was working through her to get me on his path, his, his plan that he had for us. And once I got on his path, I didn't have no decisions to make. I mean, no, 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 really a lot of work to do. I didn't have a lot of work to do. I didn't have to really be scared and not know what to do because everything that I needed to do, she was doing the work for me. And there was also other people in the place that was doing the work for me. So whenever it was something that I needed to do, they came to me and told me, hey, I need you to do this. I need you to go get that. I need you to have that. I need you to be ready for this. I need you to wait because we got to find out this. See, I didn't have no much worrying to do, but I caused myself to worry sometimes because of the unknown. I didn't know what was going to happen if this didn't happen. But there was times that, see, the enemy kept trying to step in and try to steal away what God had for me, trying to trying to keep us from getting it. But at the same time that they calling me on the phone, say, hey, it, you know, I'm just letting you know, it looks like that, you know, this right here just ain't going to um, work out or, you know, this don't look like it's going to happen, but we just going to wait and see. I don't know. We got to wait to see what they're going to do or whatever, but, you know, I'll get back with you and let you know. See, that right there was just to throw a curveball in God's plan to make me start worrying and stressing and lose faith and lose, lose direction of the way that he had for me to go. But then... I could tell you sometimes maybe hours later, maybe a day later, oh, got good news for you. God has already rerouted. God has already rerouted. Only thing we got to do is follow God and God going to lead us and take us. <clears throat> take us where he want us to go. Yes, it's going to be rough along the way, but in that time, don't worry about, <coughs> don't worry about 
what's going on. Keep on following God. God gonna God gonna lead you. Just 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 be patient. The main goal in going through a storm is being patient. You gotta be patient. You got to you got to you got to not worry about everything that's that looks like is not for the good. Because one thing by God, if it's if it's anything that's from God, it's gonna be good. But anything that's not from God that seems bad, horrible, just you can't take it. All that right there is nothing but the enemy on attack at you. That's all it is. So when you recognize that, you have to not allow that to shake you, to cause you to go into crying and depression and and worrying and all that stuff. You can't allow that to 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 let you uh be like that. Because once you allow All right, Miss uh let it go. Um welcome to the family too. I hope you subscribe. But um once you uh start allowing all that though to become a distract. I mean, once you start doing all that worrying and crying and stuff like that, y'all already know that the enemy don't need nothing but your mind. See, your mind is where he play. He 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 tear you down in your mind. He start making you that you can't have this, that you can't do that, that you're not worthy of this. You don't you don't need that. You 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 not capable of doing this. You're not capable of thinking that way. What do you want to go and do that for? Why do you want to trust this person for? Why do you want? Why you you know what I'm saying? It start making you doubt in everything that you're doing. It makes you doubt yourself. So. That's why you can't allow him to step in when you start feeling like you just can't go no more. When you feel like you can't go no more, that's when you need to start praying even harder. And I'm going to tell you another thing, too. I really feel like sometimes. Oh, excuse me. When you pray. Don't pray out loud. Don't pl- don't 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 pray out loud because when you pray out loud, you letting him hear you. You know what I'm saying? Pray pray to yourself on the inside. Just talk to the Lord on the inside. To yourself. Just pray on the inside. That way none of what you saying is um that way none of, of what you saying is escaping your mouth. It's in your thoughts and in your mind because that's what God is too. God is God is in there too. God is in your head. A lot of times you could be thinking certain things and you know that, I don't know how I even came up with this. A lot of times it wasn't even you. It probably was God talking to you. You know, that's, that's, that's how he speaks to us is through our mind. So that's how you allow the enemy get to you through your mind. He plays with your mind. So you can't allow him to um, take you off the path the Lord wants you on. And so that's why I said, like, you got to put in the work too. You got to put in the work too. And um, when God's, when, when certain things come to you, it comes to you out of nowhere. You don't know if it's right or not. Because if you if you start going on that, that path and it works out, that's the path for you. If you go on that path and it don't work out, that's not the path for you. And that's how it happened for me. When I tried to go on the path and it didn't work out, it got thrown to the wayside. It got it, it just never worked out. Wasting money and everything. It just never worked out. Hey Shauna. 
So yeah. But I enjoyed this with y'all here. I um there was more that I could have said. Well, I almost got down to the end of it, but I didn't I don't I don't know. Um I felt like y'all liked it. Um I enjoyed it. I definitely enjoyed it. I like coming to talk to y'all about what I learned today. You know what? <clears throat> Last night when I was learning this. I started to come on with y'all late last night while I was learning it. Then I and then it was like just something in me was like, no, learn this for yourself. That way you know what to say. And then I get up today and I didn't have no kind of plan for a video. No kind of plan. And then next thing you know, Wendy Williams popped up on the thing, a video about what was going on because I wasn't going to search for it. It popped up on the YouTube, so I started watching it. And then when after I watched it, I was like, somebody wanted me to uh, talk about this because they said they wanted to know what I thought about it. So I was watching. I watched the whole thing. It was an hour and a half or something like that, almost an hour and 40 minutes of it. <clears throat> I started watching it. So then once I started talking to y'all about it, It just started going its own way. And then once more negativity started coming into the comments, that's when it was like, God say, you remember what remember, remember what you was trying to do last night? Talk about this Bible study, what you learned last night. Now's the time. It's like he led me. It's like he led me into this topic so i thank god for that i think i thank god for that and i think i did what he wanted me to do today and i think i said what he wanted me to say today and i think that what i have done today was pleasing to god because everything that we do <clears throat> everything we do on a daily basis we should do what is pleasing to god and what will be good entertainment for him because he created us and he wants us to enjoy his word. Enjoying his word is worshiping him. So he wants us to enjoy his word. He wants us to talk about him and he wants us to enjoy our lives. He wants us to enjoy our lives. Us enjoying our lives in a decent way allows God to enjoy creating us in the way that he created us. So, yeah. So, I think what I did today, God got good entertainment today, just like y'all. I entertained y'all and I... I think God sat back, honey, with his feet crossed. I'm just sitting here just, spinning, just just, trying to think of how he was. He sat back with his feet crossed on his, on, on his throne and, 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 and just speaking through me, whatever he, whatever he needed me to say. And he just sat back and just enjoyed watching me do it. You know, so that makes me feel good. See, that's what reading the Bible does for me. It makes me think about <clears throat> what God want me to do, how he want me to act. And with me learning that, it's making me try to be that. Try to be that. And when you don't know, you act... <clears throat> When you when you don't know, you act a different way. You act recklessly. You talk recklessly. You do reckless things. You know, so now that I know, I'm trying to do better. I'm trying to act better, talk better. You know, I still got my ways. I still got my world ways. I'm not all the way fixed. I'm not all the way fixed. But he going to fix me, though. He going he gonna to fix me because I want to be fixed. So 
So he gonna fix me. And it's 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 gonna be something trying to fix me. It's gonna be something, you know, because I still like to drink. <clears throat> I still like to do what I like to do, but just because I like to do those things does not mean that I don't still give him his time so that he can can continue to work on me. He can he can continue to work on me. So he gonna get me together in his time. I just got to want it. So, I want it. But the more and more I want it, <clears throat> the closer and closer I'm going to get to him. So, I enjoyed this, y'all. And I hope that y'all took something from it. And um, think about yourself, too. Oh, so, this last thing. This last thing. <laughs> when you decide to live totally surrender, <clears throat> that decision will be tested. Sometimes it will mean doing inconvenient, unpopular, costly, or seemingly impossible tasks. It will often mean doing the opposite of what you feel like doing. So here's a question to ask yourself what area of my life am I holding back from God and this is what I said I'm holding back from God by worrying about things I have prayed and asked him to help me with I'm going to stop worrying about anything and everything and allow God to do the work while I trust him and have faith constantly that's what I said. So, that's it for this video. Tomorrow is Friday. Tomorrow, I really want to come and do a seafood boil with y'all. And also, let me announce it once again for those of you that want to be a blessing to me. While I'm clocked in here, my cash app is dollar sign R-O-C, the letter E-N-T-T. -T. Um... It's up to you if you want to send anything. It don't matter what you send. You can send it. It's going to help. But anywho, um, I'll see y'all tomorrow. I want to come with a uh, seafood boil tomorrow. I got a taste for some seafood. I ain't, had no, I ain't had no crabs in a long time. Ooh. I want me some crabs so bad, y'all. I want me some crabs. So... <clears throat> I want to get me some crabs tomorrow and just have me a seafood bowl. And if I find it in my time, I want to come and do a sip and paint with y'all tomorrow and just paint. And, um, yeah, just, just enjoy with y'all tomorrow. Um, that tomorrow with y'all cause, uh, yeah, yeah. So. Thank you, lovely, and um, Susan. So, yeah, that's that's my plans for tomorrow. I don't know if my plan is going to work out, but that's my plans for tomorrow. Uh, unless my husband and I make some plans. So, if my husband and I make plans for Friday, which nine times out of ten, we probably don't. But we got something in mind. I don't know if we're going to do it on Friday or Saturday. But if my husband got plans... If my husband and I don't have plans tomorrow, I'll be here tomorrow with y'all. We're going to do us a seafood ball. And then later on, we're going to do us a sip and paint if I be up to it. So that's what I got plans on doing. We're going to do us a sip and paint because I just want to do some relaxing. But anyway, I love y'all and I'll see y'all tomorrow. Y'all be blessed. And yeah, y'all. Thank y'all for the cash apps if anybody sent me a cash app. Thank you in advance. All right. Peace out, y'all.